kinds of education to be smart and to be good. Because we haven't come up with a definition of goodness that we can all agree on, we kind of ignored number two, and we're, our education system is just going to be based on number one. We'll just teach kids to be smart, and we won't worry about character. And that's a problem, too. So this lecture is going to kind of identify what does it mean to be good. Is there a universal standard of goodness that can be applied in all cultures and all religions? If there is, if we can find that universal standard, bam, we can begin to change the world. Build on the heritage that you have. Whatever your religion, whatever your tradition, build on that. Make it better. Make yourself a better person. And through Father Moon teaching, you can do that. So how do we do that? If the principles are universal, it must be logical, reasonable, rational, scientific, it must be. Because without that, it's not going to work. And it has to be religious. But it cannot favor any religion. It must be interreligious. And that's the key, uh, is to bring these two ideas together. Our continental director, Dr. Young, has asked us to read Father the Divine Principle 100 times. Seat, to understand this tradition. In fact, it can be a better seat because you can see that same teaching in the Gita and the Dhammapada and the Bible, and it's also in the Quran. Do not expect in giving any increase. So you cannot be a politician. No. <laughs> okay. In the very first verse of the Quran, because I lived in Pakistan eight years and I know this. So. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ir-Rahman, Ir-Rahim. And the gracious and merciful God, the nature of God too. The I Ching, mental teaching. To nourish your mind, there is nothing better than make the desire to you. It's actually amazing that all religions are trying to focus on this one point. So Father has taught this as well. A true life is a life in which we abandon our private desires and live for the public good. And this is all religion is possible. Abandon the private desire. No desire for yourself. Okay? So, let's take that idea. We're going to abandon our private desires and that's what it means to be mature. I have this example of what does it mean to be mature? Well, here in Austria, what is the age of maturity? Mm -hmm. 18. 18. Young people, I'm 17 and a half. I'm almost mature. I'm 18. Now, mommy and daddy can't tell me what to do anymore. No. <laughs> but is maturity based on age? What is age? When you were born, the earth goes around the sun 18 times, and I'm mature. That makes no sense at all. Because there's no responsibility. The principle of goodness that is universal. This is what Father says. To realize, and this is especially focusing on all of the teenagers, even in the ideal world, they're going to struggle with it. To realize that we exist for the sake of others is the great achievement that changes our life. This is very important because it means we can now teach this to all people without hesitating. Fair system. We'll go through it quickly. Positive, negative, proton, electrons, we know all that. The point is this. In the molecular world, they exist in pairs so that they can exist. The centrifugal and centrifugal forces and the interaction, we know that. In the animal world, the purpose of the pair system is procreation and pleasure. Oh. This is a honeybee. They got a photograph of a honeybee making. The queen bee is uh, horizontal and the drone, the male, is a vertical. And when they separate, the male sexual organ stays inside the female and it tears the abdomen. And so when they separate, the male drops to the ground dead. And so the scientists call it sexual suicide because all these males are trying to mate with this female, the queen bee, and that's where they die. What are they doing? <laughs> this is a praying mantis. You can go on the internet, hopefully not. And 
when the praying men have had sex and then they're dismounting, then the woman will turn her head around, bite the head of the man, and eat the body. Oh, wow. <laughs> Quite serious. <laughs> you know, in the animal world, that's what it means. In the animal world, the purpose of sex is conception. That's the highest purpose. Uh, we know that. In the fish, Father loves the salmon fish, and they're normally silver, and when they swim back upstream, they turn red, spawn, die, and the, the, the baby fish eats the parent's body, and they call it Big Bang spawning. Okay. In human sex and animal sex, animals can die after they have sex. Yes. It happens. What about people? <laughs> My wife and I have married for 30 years. <coughs> and we got married. <coughs> and she's still alive, and I'm still alive. Praise the Lord. When I heard Anna Marie said we give the pig three, two months, three cycles, and then we send them to slaughter, I said, <laughs> we took 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use your two books. Put things together, right? All right, let's put it together. One year later, two years later, you look at that, and the blue starts to dry and turn yellow and crack, right? So then you can easily break it apart. So, what is the purpose of human sexuality? We're supposed to be glued together one time and be together forever? No. That glue has to be again and again and again. <laughs> and sometimes you have the children, and even when you don't have the children, glue and glue. And when you go to the spirit world, you still glue and glue and glue. That's the glue that binds you together. So, God made sex the most exciting, emotionally powerful experience for a reason. What if there is, we have super glue, right? So what if somebody invented super sex? <laughs> then that would jeopardize this relationship. If God says, no, this re there's something more pleasurable than this, then this union would be in jeopardy. Vulnerable. God says, no. <clears throat> I'm going to make sex the most enjoyable <clears throat> so that you can enjoy it forever. And that's the purpose. So, let's see what the father and mother have told us. Mother says this, and father, of course, is thinking, we marry in order to resemble God, to be glued together. We marry in order to be glued together, to resemble God. And that glue is set. And that's why it's holy and sacred. That's why it's eternal. It's meant to be unique. So let's look at the different verses. In the uh, Bible, the very first chapter, <coughs> the first book, God created man in his name.